<laughs> Good afternoon, it's three o'clock, it's Friday, and this is our Facebook Live post from LSI headquarters, a home of hotshot secret. I'm Chris Gabrelchik. I'm here with Kyle Fisher, our Director of Marketing. And we have Kevin Adams, our chemical engineer. Howdy. He's also the person who built and started one of our divisions called Fluid Recovery. And we're going to be talking about antifreeze today. But as always, we want your questions. You can ask questions about anything that's going on here at LSI. We'll do our best to answer it. If we can't answer it, we'll have the answer for you next week or we'll post it on there. Oh, we'll answer it. We'll answer it. Mm -hmm. We could do that. Yep. So make sure that you like or share our video. We'd like to see lots of people seeing it. We try to get product knowledge out as much as we can, or even just tell about things that are happening this week at LSI. There's always a lot of fun adventures going on here. Indeed. And we like to share that with everybody. And if you, in the top corner of the screen there, if you click on the little bell, you can uh, sign up for live notifications when we go live. So I don't know if Levi could show, but upper right hand corner of the screen, there's a little bell. You can uh, click for live notifications. That way you don't have to rem remember us every week. We'll just pop on your Facebook. And on the web this week, we want to remind you that we do have some new products available on the web. That's really where we bring the newer items that we've been working on to you. Gasoline Extreme is available only on the web. It's our state-of-the-art gasoline additive. It's all synthetic. We've got some great, great reviews on it. Some um, really wonderful things that are happening with horsepower and fuel economy so try that we also have our diesel winter rescue if you haven't seen the other casts that we've done that's a product you put in your diesel fuel once you've gelled up because you forgot to put in a gel in there talked about it last week a little bit okay great very good i wasn't here last week so thanks yeah you were in sunny florida when we were freezing up here <sighs> talking about diesel winter anti-gel and rescue so I would like to say I feel guilty about it, but I cannot he tell why. Yeah, doesn't. I just can't wait to go back. It was really hard to come back. Um, we we also have transmission fluid available online for racing or just regular trucks, and then we have gear oil. So those are things you're going to get online. If you have questions about those, call and answer them. Kevin developed those. He's our go-to guy. And those are available to our dealers too. So yes, dealers can. Some of our dealers are picking it up, and if you're if you're interested, you know, talk to your local uh, independent dealer and let them know you want them to start stocking it, and we can get it out to them. Absolutely, and don't forget to subscribe to our email newsletter uh, for exclusive deals and updates. Then we're going to start sending technical bulletins and more product knowledge that way, just to make that a little bit more robust. And we got a lot of content coming out right now. A lot of good content. It's going to be put. Uh, Let's see, we have it on the website, don't we? Yep. And uh, we're going to be posting links on our, on our Facebook page, too. So we'll For those of you that can't see because he's on the back side of the camera, we've got Levi back there. So when we're referring to him or Eric, <laughs> yeah. Levi runs our e-commerce. And we'll, we'll ask him questions about that. And he usually just nods his head. So you can't really hear that. But we'll explain to you. We'll, we'll <laughs> interpret for you. Exactly. Yeah. So, so on today's video, uh, today's video we're going to be talking about, like we said, antifreeze and coolant. Uh, a lot of people don't even know that we even offer it. Um, and a unique part about you here is talk a lot about LSI. We've got our LSI backdrop to, to today. Uh, obviously our parent company name with Hotshot Secret being our, our brand underneath. But we have a, uh, a lot of people wonder what we have under this umbrella. And one of the unique parts of it is our fluid recovery. Uh, so we're going to talk a little bit about that side of the business as well answer your questions uh, obviously and uh, we're going to go over some uh, news uh, TV coming up we got a lot of TV coming up this week tomorrow we got two guys garage at 6 30 a.m. for your early risers on Saturday uh, this is all on velocity now called motor trend network so the guys there at two guys garage are going to do a little talk on our diesel extreme and our EDT a little two-step <coughs> combo there and then following that later in the morning at 11 a.m. we're going to be on car fix with our seasonal time our, our DWAG or our diesel winter anti-gel and then throughout the week there we got Monday uh, the 11th car, car fix at 9 a.m. are going to talk about the DWAG and on Wednesday car fix 9 a.m. is our stiction eliminator and the FR3 so a lot of TV coming up this week you can uh, get a little educated on some of our products here this week at, at LSI, which is the, the parent company, Lubrication Specialties Inc., we've worked on some ad creations and some print and radio. Yep. You guys did that in marketing. Yep. Any, anything new? 
Yeah, we're gonna have some new radio ads running on our uh, WLW, our, our, our trucking network. Mm -hmm. So that reaches quite a bit of the country, so stay tuned for those. Is there anything new on the messaging going on with the print? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Really? Tell yeah. Tell me about that, Kyle. <laughs> I think we'll just let them see. Okay. We'll, let, we'll, we'll be a little surprised by that. And we've been we've been working this. Game. Everybody want to chat in on that. I'm good. Be good. Okay. Who's that? Thunder. Yeah. We're always trying to figure out better ways to tell our story, and that that was one of the difficulties when we came out with Stiction Eliminator, our first retail product. What we do is really complicated, and it's really difficult to get it across, which is really why a lot of people told us it wouldn't work in the first place, because, in their opinion, the retail customer or you, the people watching this, don't want complicated products, they want simple things. Uh, one of our vendors told us that the most sold product on the shelf is something that you can add to gas, diesel, you can put in the oil, you can put in gasoline, you can put, uh, put in diesel oil or diesel fuel. And we said, but that just doesn't make sense. And they said, we know, but that's what people want. Well, we bucked the trend and we said, we don't believe that. We think that our the people that like our products, they want to know the deep dive, they want to hear the rest of the story. So we're going to go ahead and do this anyway. We're going to go forward with developing the line, and that's what we did. So far, it seems like we were right. Um, there is a segment of the population that really does want to know what they're buying, how it works, why it works, you know, give us the details. So that's what we try to do. So that's why this messaging thing comes up all the time here at LSI and Hotshot Secret, because we're trying to figure out better ways to explain it without, you know, becoming boring or not being relevant. And that's also why we like questions too, because mm -hmm. if you're asking that question, that's kind of telling us that we need to be explaining that better. So we encourage you to uh, post the questions. We can answer them now and then also work that into our messaging going forward. That's too. Or suggestions, you know, hey, mm -hmm. I've been buying your product for years and this is the one thing I could never figure out. Can you explain this better in the future for your labels or on another, you know, podcast or Facebook cast, whatever these are called. Looks like there's some other things going on on LSI this week with uh, lubricity testing uh, on the R and D side. Yeah, yeah, we're uh, we're testing out a lubricity only additive. Uh, you know, we we looked at uh, how to improve the lubricity of our products. You know, our strategy currently is if there wasn't any lubricity in the diesel fuel, it was out of spec. Our lubricity would bring it down below the the engine manufacturer specifications. We still have those customers out there that just want to really make sure that they're covered. Yep. Uh, you know, racers that are running a lot of cetane, you know, it's it's a little bit drier. So. Uh, and speaking of that, I should I should note our we have a, our latest article going out in our content development. There's a really good read I just read yesterday. I think we we're probably posted this weekend. Is a uh, is a little deep dive into lubricity and how uh, the seasonal weather changes has an impact on that. So it's a really good read. We had a good help out from one of our, our dealers. So look for that. Good good, good read on that. The, the challenge on that is we're trying to develop products that are top tier professional grade and we want a fully a rounded product that's fully formulated as we would call it so in the past we've not done just straight lubricity because you know i'm thinking on my diesel truck i want something that handles everything cetane lubricity rust and corrosion inhibitor you know detergent everything that i would want but since then we have found a lot of people have specifically requested just lubricity additive now, if we increase the lubricity on some of our products, we'd have to take things out, which we don't want to do. Yeah. We don't want to say, yeah, we're going to sacrifice detergent so you can have more lubricity. Mm -hmm. So we're looking at, what if we just made a straight lubricity out of for the person that just wants lubricity? And that's what Kevin's been working on. And like all of our products, we want to be better than anything on the market, and that's the goal for R&D. Yeah, you know, we be the number one that's pretty additive. That's it has kinda, to be better than anything else out there. That is kind of one of those, those big things in, in, our, in our world, too. The, the number one lubricity additive. So uh, we're going to look to put our, our, our pull down in that. And, and that's really easy to do, right, Kevin? Yeah, not, not so easy. But <laughs> <laughs> we're, we're anxiously waiting results back from the lab. We think we've hit it this time. So, Good. Yeah. How Good. many tries has it taken? Five. Five. All right. So we're getting closer. Yeah. Like we say, uh, Chris will keep sending them back to the lab until it's the best. We'll call it, we'll call it uh, Lubricity <laughs> 6, the 6 formula or something. Yeah. <laughs> some catchy name like that. Exactly. Okay, how about FR3 testing? We've done some FR3 testing this week. What are we, what are we working on there, Kevin? Yeah, we get, uh, you know, like, like Kyle said, uh, we get a lot of reports back from customers. Uh, you know, how we got started with the gun oil was somebody used FR3 as a gun oil and said how much it improved the action of their, their guns. So with FR3, we get a lot of reports back that, hey, I have, Big tires on my truck. My steering wheel was really hard to turn. Put the FR3 in, and, and now it's it's a night and day difference. So 
So we're trying to capture that with some quantitative data. You know, we don't like to say, it I mean, testimonials, yeah, testimonials are good, but we like to say, hey, this is what the baseline torque was to turn a steering wheel, and after FR3, it's, it's this percentage, so. And I'll testify, I put it in, in my power steering. I know it works, yeah. but just coming out saying, oh, it works, doesn't quite cut it. We like to put the science behind it, so yeah. putting some metrics to it, that's what we're doing. Yeah, so, so that's what we're working on. We, we made up a custom test rig to try to get that quantification and Shout out to Aaron. Yeah, shout out to Aaron. It was quite a contraption he built just, just for the testing. And most generally, that's what happens on, on all of our products. To be able to test them, we have to come up with test apparatuses and ways to test them. Yeah, they don't things. exist. We're inventing it. Well, Stiction, when we came up with the Stiction uh, remove, or Stiction Eliminator, we, we had the market for a while, then we started seeing other products. And then we had to come up with a Stiction test because we wanted to improve the formula. Well, how do you improve it if we don't even have a baseline? So then we had to invent a stiction test and then start testing products with it. So it was, it's what we do. Yeah. And then our gun, our gun oil, Kyle, is being rebranded as gun and bow lube. Yeah, we found that uh, the gun oil is an excellent bow lube as well um, in working with our friends, Team Fitzgerald. So, and, and like we said, we, we always want to form, fully formulate our products, make sure they're the best of the best. And when we found out it was good for bows, the first question was, okay, well now it opens up a whole new can of worms. Do we need to dive back into bows and find out how we can improve the product? Well, it turns out we've already maxed it out and there can't be anything better there. So bows, crossbows, guns um, is how we're gonna brand the product between us and the little camera in front of us. It's good on everything. It's no, we don't want that. No. Fishing reels, uh, we found that everybody keeps telling us what it's good <clears> for, but uh, it's going to be a gun and bow lube, and um, we're also going to be offering it a new form yeah. soon. An, an aer aerosol can? We're going to have an aerosol can. So it'll be easier for the guys that, the hunters out there that want to, I know a lot like the needle application, uh, but it's tough to carry in your in your bag or when you're out hunting and stuff. Our aerosol can will have a nice cap to it that you can just throw in your bag, throw in your truck, uh, and, and get around with it a lot easier. And next week we're having our tractor supply trade show. Correct. So that should be exciting and good. You have everything ready for that? Of course we do. We've got top notch team here. <laughs> and we're working on some new dealer programs and incentives. That's going to be rolled out hopefully next week. Yeah, and, and some new uh, sponsored racer incentives. We got a new uh, ambassador program package we just had a nice meeting about today. And we'll probably have more to talk about next week. We're going to start to kind of try to work out the kinks and kick that off next week. So. For all of you uh, sponsored racers and a lot of our ambassadors out there, we got something cool coming for you. So we'll talk about that when we get it buttoned up. Okay. Other, how about the Hot Shot Secret dealers, our authorized dealers across the country? You want to give a shout out to those? Go for it, Kev. Okay, we have three here. <laughs> First one's Powerhouse Performance Diesel in Mount Holly, Arkansas. Welcome. Welcome aboard. Welcome. Uh, Block Diesel in Janesville, Wisconsin. I just saw your banner block diesel. It looks really good. I like your logo. And the last one, PSP Diesel in Houston, Texas. Down in Texas, got a lot of a lot of customers down in Texas. Texas is like the number one state for diesel vehicles. So it is. if you're in Texas, tell everybody about our product. Yeah, and <laughs> go check out go check out PSP Diesel if you're in Houston. Uh, they're going to be carrying our products now. So happy to have those guys aboard. So before we jump into the product education, which is going to be our uh, fluid recovery and our, our coolant, uh, I start to see some questions have popped up, so let's nail these before we get going too far. You can keep them coming. We'll answer keep them coming. Come yep. Uh, David Colorado says, on Stiction Eliminator, if my Duramax takes 2.5 gallons of oil, how much Stiction Eliminator do I add? So we actually are trying to clean up the dosage rate on Stiction Eliminator. It's, it, it, we're going to be rolling it out on, on next batch of labels on it. Uh, we realized the treatment rate had a bit of a range to it that kind of we get a lot of questions about. So to clarify and to clean it up, we are now recommending on your initial dosage, you want to do four ounces per, per quart of oil. Yep. And on your follow-up uh, you know, maintenance dosage, it would be two ounces per quart. So if you're running two and a half gallons, that's 10 quarts. You want to run about 40 ounces on your initial and 20 ounces on your follow-up. It's a good rule of thumb to go by. And again, if you're a little bit high on that, you know, you're not going to hurt anything. Um, but that's what we're, we're now recommending just to kind of clean up the dosage on that. So I hope that answers your question, David. James Bruce, welcome back. 
live it right day and night. Chris here, <laughs> here's your sign off. There it is. <clears throat> we look, we're looking for a sign off for you. Big country out. <laughs> Lube it right day and night. I think I think we'll take a go. vote on that. We'll see if it works. So lube it right day and night. I don't know. I could see that going down some bad roads. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we'll, we'll take a vote on it. Uh, Eric Daniels, the guy on the right kind of looks like Robin Williams. <laughs> I'd agree. Keith Woods says, the diesel extreme fuel additive and the sticks and laminator I run at the same time when I do oil change changes and the two combined work great. Keep up the good work. Thank you. Thanks, Keith. We appreciate it. We love, we love hearing back from everybody. And yeah, those two uh, in combination taking care of both your fuel and oil side, especially when you run them together there on fresh oil change, you really feel it right away. Mm -hmm. James Bruce says, I now have FR3 in an oil can because I used up all of my gun oil. <laughs> Hey, well, we got more if you need some. To, uh, just keep placing those orders. TJ jumped in there to help uh, David out. Thanks, TJ. Logan Cavender has a question. He says, hey, guys, question on the TSE. Is it safe for Mercon v, v fluid, Mercon 5 fluid? I'm going to order the gasser package for my truck so I can do those dreaded plugs and good full service on my personal truck. Yes, it's safe. It's safe for Mercon. And this is what's unique about the transmission section eliminator. When he's mentioning TSE, that's a product for your transmission. And it makes the transmissions shift a lot smoother. And it also cleans off any stiction inside the transmission because what happens on a microscopic level, not like in, a, in an engine where we've got a lot of hydrocarbon buildup, it's, I don't know, 10 to 100 times smaller. But it slows down all those little parts in that are moving and kind of hangs them up a little bit. Usually the oil pressure pushes them, but this makes that run a lot smoother and a lot more efficiently. But what makes it safe to use is there's no metals in it. Most additives are a metal of some sort, so if you, or some other kind of thing like sulfur, phosphorus, calcium, zinc, things like that. On well, transmission, that's a really finely tuned balance of those, and you really can't do a lot to that additive package without messing it up because you need an exact amount of friction in there to make things work. But because there's no metals in there and it's a group five ester, it's completely safe. So basically what we're doing is, is upgrading the transmission fluid to make it work better by adding a, a synthetic ester. So in, in essence, you're making it a semi-synthetic transmission fluid. Mm -hmm. So it just runs better. It makes it run cooler and a lot more efficient. Well, premium fluid. Correct. We even did a test one time to see if it would help um, on a racing truck and we got a 0.6% increase in horsepower. Mm -hmm. So that kind of that kind of gave us a, an indication of what, what parts of the inside of that, that, that we are affecting. Eric Daniels says, I'm not going to spray aerosol into my cams on my bow. I appreciate the comment, Eric. As we always say, we, 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 we love to hear your input on that. Uh, I, Feel free to shoot us another message or private message us. Um, we inter we'd be interested in hearing why and, and how. We did do some research into uh, putting the product into an aerosol and uh, we're doing more testing on it to make sure that that doesn't affect the performance of, of, of the product. Uh, so far, so good. And, um, you know, I guess there's a potential that uh, we could possibly look to keeping the needle applicators in the small runs. Um, and, and so forth. But it'd be interested in hearing your expertise on that. So shoot, shoot us your reason why on that. We'd love to hear. I mean, the hard part about those needles is they're so delicate. They, you know, they break during shipping. They break in your pack. So we're trying to come up with something that's a little bit more robust. And you know, the the three-in-one oiling can works, but then you don't have the the narrow tip that you can get into small places. So sure. we're trying to find better packaging, better application. We know the. We know that the oil works great, the gun oil that we've developed. Now, how do we put it into a package that is worthy of the phenomenal product that we've created? And, and the aerosol cans that we're looking at right now are, uh, they do have an applicator tip uh, yeah, nozzle, straw. so you can use straw so you can still get into small little areas. Brian Mullins uh, was saying, in other words, add the stick eliminator first, then fill to the full mark with oil. That's, that's correct, Brian. I see you're having a little back and forth there. Um, with the other Brian, the yeah, you want to displace your amount of stiction of oil with the stiction eliminator. So, um, if you're putting a quart in there, you want to put a quart less oil. Greg Jolly says, "Hey, hey, Greg, how you doing, man? Everyone's looking forward to the Outlaw Diesel season starting soon. So, uh, 
thanks for thanks for chiming in. Nice to think about those things because it makes you think spring is coming. I know, so. I know, I know. Well, and we have the new event uh, down in Florida here in T minus one month. Yeah, almost exactly. One. You had to look at your watch for that. I kind of will. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Does it say one month on there? Or it what? does. It does. So Kevin will be going to Florida for that. So we're looking forward to the Sunco Spring Shakedown, and uh, we'll be the left lane sponsors there. I think BD Diesel's got the right lane. We got the left lane, and like I said. Racers, left lane will be faster, promise. We coat it with FR3. Just kidding. Logan Cavender says, thanks guys, love the beanie as well I got from you. Well, thank you, Logan, thanks for uh, for chiming in. Oh, we got another sign off for you, Chris. We can't fix stupid, but we sh we can sure lubricate it. <laughs> <laughs> thank you, that's it. We'll one. think about that. Uh, we might have some backlash, but I like it. <laughs> Uh, Eric, I'm going to come back to you, Robert, to finish these up because you're going to lead into our next segment. Scott Wells says, hey, y'all got me to 300,000 miles. Thanks, Chris. That's great, Scott. We love to hear that. Hope you can run a great at 300,000 and let us know when you hit 400,000. Ryan Riddle, great products, guys. Keep up the good work. Thanks, Ryan. Ryan's a, a, a heck of a racer. Uh, just came uh, on to the Hot Shots uh, Secret Motorsports team, so we're looking forward to working with Ryan a lot. He's actually a uh, Ohio based as well so we like to support local guys as well and looking forward to working with you this year Ryan so to roll us into our our new education for this I'm gonna lead off with Eric Daniels question is your antifreeze recycled and is it dex cool compatible perfect question that's a good question okay so maybe we should take a step back and kind of give them a little bit of background on, on the chemistries and then then get to the question sure Okay, so so there's there's two types of specifications that are that are really the two categories of the antifreezes are are distinguished by, and one is the D thirty three oh six, which is for automobile, and then D sixty two ten for diesels. The big difference between those two additive packages is that the, the diesel additive package has a nitrite in it. And the reason why nitrites are in diesel antifreeze is because of the vibration in the engine from the pistons going up and down causes cavitation or bubbles to form outside the liners. And just like, uh, like a ship propeller that has big gouges taken out of it, those little tiny bubbles can actually erode away at a, at a liner in a diesel engine. So the nitrites, that additional additive that's in a diesel uh, antifreeze, you know, coats that liner surface and keeps those bubbles from, from chewing out the, the material and, and really protecting your engine. So that's one of the, the, that's one of the big differences. Um, it is an additive that gets depleted over time, and that additive uh, is generally called a supplemental coolant additive. So. Okay. It's so you're telling me coolant's not just to cool the motor? Yeah, <laughs> yeah, it actually yeah. serves a lot of. <laughs> it hey, actually serves a lot of different purposes. I did say I want to play dummy today because this is the least product I know about. So I'm yeah. learning with everybody out there. Yeah, it keeps it cool. Uh, antifreeze or ethylene glycol, which is the active ingredient in antifreeze, is actually a little bit acidic. So there's additives in there to keep it from uh, corroding the soft metals like the copper and the, the brass that's in the system. Um, it keeps scaling from accumulating. You know, there's there's hard water uh, salts in antifreeze, and keeps the the scale in uh, in solution. Uh, so, uh, and then of course it keeps antifreeze keeps your your uh, car from or truck from freezing in the winter time. Okay. So the so the biggest difference between the diesel antifreeze and the gas antifreeze is the nitrite. Yes. And that is primarily to keep erosion from happening from microburst yes yes that's correct gotcha very good and then in our antifreeze so just to back up one step lubrication specialties has a filter company the franz bypass filter we have the antifreeze company fluid recovery and we have the hot shot secret line of additives and then we do some other things on the side but fluid recovery we're picking up antifreeze around ohio we bring it in and, and when you see recycled antifreeze some companies will filter it and re it that's not what we do what process do we use, Kevin? <clears throat> yeah, our, our process is called, you know, vacuum distillation. So 
so the in general the three different ways to recycle antifreeze is just like you said taking it adding some chemical in it causing some of the solids to come out but it, it doesn't take the color out doesn't take most of the hard water out it puts some additive back in generally that type of recycling can only be suitable for cars you know diesels are, are very demanding applications as far as antifreeze goes uh, the second way is reverse osmosis and just like a reverse osmosis water system, you know, the antifreeze would pass through a, a porous membrane and causes the impurities to be on one side and the, and the recycled antifreeze to be on the other side. Mm -hmm. that, that step is just a little bit better than, the, than the, the chemical step because there's still some hard water salts. That method doesn't take out chlorine. Uh, you know, some salts, some additive package is still there. A lot of recyclers that use that, there's still that dye color in the antifreeze. So what we do with the vacuum distillation, we, it's a heat process, and we take the antifreeze and we boil the glycol and the water away from the hard water salts, the old additive package, and when our antifreeze comes and gets you know, collected in the condenser, it, look, it looks like water. Mm -hmm. you know, so we call it re-refined because of the, it's really similar to a you know, refining process to make you know, make other hydrocarbons. But it's, it's actually the best way to, to produce antifreeze. So then you not only have a recycled glycol product, you have you know, distilled water to go with it, which is in diesel applications, it's, that's an important aspect as well as it's having a high quality water with your antifreeze. All right. So we're actually turning it into steam, condensing it. It's coming out water white yeah. when we get it. Then we polish it, test it, re-advertise it. So it is as good as new antifreeze. Yeah, yep. So it is. And I will chime in because I finally know something about this here. <laughs> Very cool about our building, when we steam it, we're using using that to heat our our entire warehouse, right? Yep. Yeah, sure. We we try to be as forward thinking as possible. So so we have when we built this building a few years ago, we put uh, loops in the floor mm -hmm. and when we condense the, the the steam off of the antifreeze machine it actually heats the manufacturing area in the winter time and then when you collect the antifreeze to be recycled you get some oil and we use that oil on top of the antifreeze we actually have waste oil burners that fire the process so so it's, it's very eco-friendly not only in the, the the way we process and manufacture but you know the product i mean all around we're, we're being yeah. very eco Responsible, let's say. Yes. yes. Yeah. yeah. That's all. All of that steam is being run through a heat exchanger, and then it it cools it by actually warming up the floor, which warms up the plant. Yeah. There is no there is no furnace or heating system in the manufacturing plant. It's all heated by fluid recovery, and that's and it was a good system. It was warm out there when it was forty below. Yep. It, actually, um, it, yeah, it, the doors it, open. Oh yeah, we have doors. <laughs> it's toasty warm. It, yeah. it definitely keeps it warm. It sure does. And one of the questions I get the most often, Kevin, is. What significance do the colors have for the antifreeze? Yeah. Do they really matter? Is that just dye that they put in there? In general, it, it's just the dye. Now there is some industry standards that mm -hmm. you know that mean one thing versus another. So, so for example, in diesels, a, a red dyed antifreeze in diesels usually is means that the the product is the equivalent of an EC1. It's mm -hmm. it has the nitride package. Um, it's you know it's it's fully formulated for for a diesel application. Uh, when you talk about automobiles, you know some OEMs have have picked their own color, like you know blue or pink. Uh, some of the you know Asian manufacturers have done that. Uh, in general, the the additives are very very similar. You know nowadays the the additives don't have silicone in it. They don't have nitrates in them. Uh, the big difference between automotive additive packages, and this gets back to uh, to the question that we had, is there's organic acid technology. It refers to an extended life antifreeze, and there's a, a the Dexcool, which is like a fluorescent orange. That is a a pure organic acid. Uh, once once that additive had, had come out for a few years, there were some problems with it, compatibility with other antifreezes. And so a hybrid organic acid or an HOAT was developed. And so, so that fellow's question, is your antifreeze compatible? Are 
but the additive package we use with our antifreeze, the 150, is a hybrid organic acid technology which is compatible with Dexcool and any other uh, antifreeze manufacturer. I saw um, the difference between HOT and non hot Yeah. They say, yeah. Yep. Yeah, and, and then so for our product line, we, we have two basic products. We have what we would call the 150K, and that's that's the hot that we talked about. So it's your yellow. <clears throat> that is a fully formulated antifreeze that once once a diesel hits 150,000 miles, it should be checked. And that nitrite level, if it's low, that's when you would add a supplemental coolant out of package. Now, in recent years, uh, a new technology has come out, which is really a lifetime fill. Uh, the hybrid organic acid, it does deplete over time. The nitrite depletes over time. Well, the technology has been introduced where the, the additive really does not deplete. You know, we, we claim 750,000 miles, but it's, it, it probably would actually go much longer than that. That's our red 750,000. Yep. 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 So one of the other questions that we get a lot of times is, can we just add regular tap water to the antifreeze? The antifreeze by itself isn't as good as an antifreeze mixed with water, correct? Correct. Yeah, and, there's... And we shouldn't mention that we do offer both... Uh, concentrate. So one would be called a concentrate, one would be a premix, right? Yeah. Yeah. So, so the question of, of the tap water, you know, tap water, whether it comes from the city or from a well, it has salt in it. You know, look at any hot water tank and you'll see the, the scale that accumulates on the side where, you know, there's some leaks around fittings. You know, basically that's what happens in your cooling system. The, those hard water salts come out of solution and they, they cause scale inside your, your system. A lot of times scale will accumulate, it's reverse soluble, so it'll accumulate in the hottest area. Unfortunately, that's where you want the, the best cooling protection. So. So when you use tap water, you're really compromising your additive package a little bit because you're, you're using up some of those additives to, to combat the salt. And you're, you're taking a chance of scale you know, accumulating in your, in your system. So what's the best case scenario? Distilled water? Yeah, the best case scenario is distilled water. You know, that's why in our 50-50, uh, that's probably what we sell 90% of. So 50-50 would be pre-mixed antifreeze ready to use? Yes. With distilled water already blended. Yeah. yeah. And the reason why they, they, you add water to, to glycol is two reasons. One, glycol is really there for the, for the freeze protection. You know, cars and trucks have to operate in the wintertime and they can't freeze up. It's actually not that great of a heat transfer fluid. So 50-50 is, is that optimum point where you get the best freeze protection and you still get good uh, heat transfer. So water transfer is better than glycol, but glycol keeps the water from freezing yeah. or boiling. Boil either yeah. way. Yeah. And our product, if you buy our the 50-50 the product, it's got pure distilled water and pure ethylene glycol and then additives. Exactly. So, yep. Okay, very good. We did have a question come in from Logan saying, is the nitride additive safe in gasoline engines? It is. It is. Yeah, the way, the way to think about it is, you know, the the automotive spec is is kind of the minimum protection you should have for your antifreeze. The the nitrite doesn't hurt anything; it's just extra additive that uh, that you may or may not need. Yeah, right. Exactly. Okay. So how can hurt can only help. Yeah. How can antifreeze get into your oil? Uh oh. Hmm. It's not well, quite it's an antifreeze never, question, but it's a good question for you. It guys. is. Yeah, it's, it's, it's never not, a good thing. It's never good. <laughs> <laughs> Either you have a, an oil cooler leak. You, you know, if you think about how the engine's put together, there's really two main areas that oil comes in close contact with water, or your antifreeze. And that is your, your head gasket, where you have mm -hmm. ports, you know, outside where your antifreeze and your oil is, and your oil cooler. So, either one of those is bad. That's why we... Also, why we recommend oil analysis regularly. Exactly, that's what I was about to say. Yeah, a lot that's, of times you can't you can't tell to look at the oil when you're starting to get a trace leak and what oil if you analysis. Taste it? Pardon me. What if you taste it? Can you taste the antifreeze if you taste the <laughs> yeah, oil? You can taste it. Yeah, you can taste the oil. Feel it there. But but you know that's often a big thing, like right, with a head gasket on, especially in some of these high performance, like some of the race trucks, mm -hmm. you know, and stuff. And you're having that much pressure under that um, head gasket goes. That's that's bad news or 
a good reason why we offer our oil analysis, we can often spot something before yeah. it becomes catastrophic. So it's, it's, it's very cheap insurance to do regular oil analysis. And if it comes back that we spot that there's some coolant in there, yeah. something's going on. And uh, usually you can, we can get to it before something major happens. Yeah. And it makes sludge too. Yeah. You know, it's a lot of bad things, of course, happen. But so like the milkshake looking. Yeah, yeah, yeah and the oil gets thicker. And yep. It's no good. No. Kevin, a lot of times we try to make, well, we always try to make the product the highest level of execution that could possibly be made. Is there anything that can be done to antifreeze to really make it any better? Or is it just, it is what it is? It really is what it is. We, we looked into water wetters a couple years ago, you know, trying to figure out some, some way we can set ourselves apart. Uh, there's what we concluded was it's they're good products but because our main market is diesels uh, and people are running these for a long time it can compromise the chemistry a little bit so so really the best you can do is just to make sure you use a high quality oil high quality additive and you know maintain your antifreeze just like you do your oil you know do those regular checks with the nitrites and you know, make sure and, and pH checks. So, sure so what about these products that say like will lower your temperature by 15 degrees and things of that nature? Because I've seen those on the market. What what are they? Is that all hype or is there something to it? No, they actually do. What what those products do is uh, changes the surface tension, which which helps the the heat transfer uh, in the antifreeze. So explain that a little bit. When you you're talking about something that makes the water wetter. Yeah, yeah, they're called water wetters. Um, that sounds kind of silly. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. The, the main application where there's a big benefit is, is in, in racing. Yeah. You know, a lot of people use water wetters in racing. So it would be like a surfactant? Yeah. Yep. So, okay. So, I heard that one. All right. So in essence, what we're talking about is, you know, you're breaking the surface tension of, of water. If you're a farmer, a lot of times they'll use um, a surfactant in the chemicals, so like when a drop of water gets onto a leaf, it just sits there as a drop. When you put a surfactant in it, it spreads out and goes through there. When we used to do a demonstration with um, surfactants, you would take a styrofoam cup and put a pinhole in it, and you could fill it with water and the water wouldn't go out. You just put a couple of drops of surfactant and it would run right out of the hole. So what you're doing is you're breaking the surface tension of the water so that it can get into more places. But that's probably not good for the additive package because now you're opening up the rust and corrosion maybe? Yeah, it, it, it can compromise the the protection of your system. It's 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 risky to use them on a on a daily basis in a diesel. But if you had a race car and you needed some better temperature control, you may put a water. Well, that's water. the that's yeah, the unique thing with, with 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 the racing, and we hear this a lot. And actually, uh, Firepunk asked me about if we were looking into it because in the race applications, they don't run the coolant. You know, they just run straight water mm -hmm. because uh, you can't really have coolant out on the racetrack. Coolant is the worst thing you can get on a racetrack worse than oil gasoline because it's slippery yeah mm. it is it's hard to clean they cannot get it off the track it is the worst thing you can do is get get cool on the track so they run water and that's why race cars can't drive around on the street because they'll overheat but they can make it down the track and get back to the pit so explain to me maybe now that we open up this thing of water wetter in a race application when they're running literally water only mm. how's that water wetter helping i mean it, uh, you know, on straight water. You yeah. Whiteboard, Kevin. <laughs> I may not be able to explain this completely. Uh -oh. Well, <laughs> nerds, get ready. <laughs> <laughs> but if if you put a drop of straight water on a table, and you put a drop of you know fifty fifty antifreeze on the table, you'll notice that water like like really looks like the head of a mushroom when mm -hmm. it's on the table. There's a lot of surface tension. Um, you know, holding holding it together. So right. when when we looked into water wetters, the other other thing that we found was that there's there is a lot more surface tension when when it's just water in the system. So the water wetter really really affects the cooling when it's straight water, but it's almost I won't say a negligible amount, but it's not really that noteworthy of amount when you cut it with fifty fifty. Okay. So you're saying that the so, coolant already has a, an effect on the water that makes it wetter to begin with? Yeah, the glycol it, does. Okay, so it acts. Yeah. So that's why water wetter would be attractive on water, 
in an erasing application because it's not getting cut with any coolant at all. So here's an experiment that you guys can do at home to understand what we're saying because it really isn't nearly as complicated as we're making it sound. <laughs> um, just take take a, a drop of water and put it on your kitchen counter. Just take your finger and just put a couple drops and then take some Dawn dish soap or whatever dish soap you've got and um, take a toothpick and stick it in there or take a fork and just put a little bit on there and just barely touch that drop of water. As soon as you touch that drop of water, you will watch just completely open up and flatten out. Why didn't we have that ready for a demonstration today? Marketing, man. <laughs> you just find something on the ball there, they would have this ready to go. I, if I would have thought about it, I would have done that. But you could try it at home. It's, it's really not that hard, but it gives you the idea, the concept of it. Yeah. And so what you're doing is you're breaking the surface tension of that water and it's going everywhere. And the race application, what, which Kyle's talking about, you know, inside the, inside the radiator, you're spreading that water out a lot more. And even though it's on a micro level, you're, you're covering a lot more square centimeters or millimeters of the inside of that system and you're transferring the heat faster. So there's a considerable amount of difference between water with a surfactant in it versus just water. When we do it with an antifreeze, a fully blended antifreeze, it's negligible. And when you're opening up the inside of the system to those little tiny nooks and crannies, you're maybe undoing some of what the additives are meant to do as far as protecting the inside. That's, that's the ballpark. Now, if you need, if you have any questions about that, send them over and we'll explain it some more. But that's the ballpark idea. Do you have a couple questions came in? Uh, Eric Daniel says, I guess I missed it. Is the DEX cool approved? Is it, meaning does our, I, I'm assuming does our ours package DEX cool approved. DEX cool, yes. Yep. So yes, Eric, we got that covered. Uh, Brian Fedazzo says, uh, is the red coolant compatible with the BMW blue used in BMW diesel applications? Hmm. Maybe BMW purple then. So. <laughs> <Yeah>. <clears throat> I know the I, I, I know the BMW blue is a non-hope. Mm -hmm. Because I once switched in a Chrysler application that was running hope mm -hmm. and they told me you don't want to mix the two. By any means, so make sure. What are you sure saying? You hope, hope, H O A T. Yeah. What's that stand for? That's a hybrid, <laughs> hybrid organic acid technology. That. Yeah. H O A T. So I had to do like a full flush to get it out of there. Yeah. So they because you don't want to mix the two. Mm -hmm. As far as blending it into our red. We don't get asked that question very often. I need to. I need to check on that. I, so what I would want to find out. Definitely the colors would. Like you said, it probably would turn a purple, but. Which would be cool. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, what I want to check is uh, possibly our yellow would meet that spec. That would be green. for diesel. No, actually, the yellow is one of those colors you can put on top of blue or red, and it'll it'll take on that color. Mm-hmm. Can you just make some blue for him? Maybe if he buys a tote. All right, <laughs> <laughs> <Hi>, Brian. <laughs> tote, tote love with you. Get a tote and make custom colors. Blue. We'll do it for you. <laughs> Uh, James uh, Bruce says, do you have an additive for what I have in the truck and cars now till I change or just need to change the antifreeze now? I don't understand that question. I think he's asking, can he spike what he's got now or does he need to do a full flush and fill? <clears throat> yeah, the, the, kind of the general rule of thumb is you can add 10% of, you can top off with 10% and then if, if it goes above that, you really ought to Change out the additive package. <laughs> oh, we brought the demonstration. We brought the demonstration. You gonna do it? Uh, do we have a way? They just brought R and D. Just brought us supplies to do the demonstration we just talked about because they're watching and they're on top of this. Hey, I tell you what, Eric. Yeah. Why don't you set it up on the table with the other camera? We'll keep going, and, and then Levi can turn that. You got the camera ready? <laughs> okay. Any other questions there? Nope, we got all the other ones uh, taken care of. Okay. Any other things about antifreeze that you want to cover? Yeah, I mean, it's not our most sexiest product. It's not the most exciting product. Um, but yet, it, it's something I think that's very unique to what we do. And to be under the LSI umbrella, obviously, it's not a national or worldwide brand like we have because it's a, um, we pick up all the coolant and locally in Ohio. It, it doesn't become, there's some shipping issues with, with coolant, well, right? Well, one of the things to keep in mind is that antifreeze or coolants are a, a low cost item. I mean, they 
So to ship them very far, sometimes the shipping becomes more than what the product is worth. It's so a heavy products. Correct. So just so by and large, these are Ohio, PA, Indiana. Those are the areas that we sell the most. What's innovative about it is, you know, we are cleaning up the environment. We're taking used oil and used antifreeze, and we're reusing them for something really good. And at the same time, we're heating the plant up, saving more fossil fuels. So it's all in all, it meets what we're trying to do and how we do it in terms of. We don't just go through the motions and do things like everybody else. We kind of step out there and do things in our own way, and, and it is kind of cool. Yeah. Not to mention it adds more jobs and it does help the Ohio economy, so that's that's all good too. Go Ohio. That's right. I'm all about things here in Ohio, especially Mount Gilead. This is our this is where we live and and go to school and do everything. So we try to make things really as, as the best we can for for our community. So okay. before we wrap up, you want to run through a couple of the FAQs for questions we got this week from. Um, all right, so John asked us, uh, I have a 6.4 power stroke, is a little blow by normal? I would, Kevin can answer this also, but I would say that any diesel engine, because the compression rate is so high, a little bit of blow by is almost impossible to avoid. Yeah. It's, I think it's in control and limiting it to the most that you can. Yeah. Uh, yeah. One, Go ahead, Kim. Yeah, the, the, they say the, that a kind of a check for blow by is to is to put the loosen up the oil cap and and turn it upside down and set it set it on the, the valve cover and if it if it falls off or you know vibrates a lot that's that's too much blow by. Um, I did find out that the Ford IDS um, without getting into the engine it has a lot of diagnostics that you know if a fellow suspected he had too much blow by you know they could they could tell him for sure you know if there's too much if or not, there's problem or if yeah. that's satisfactory level yeah they can look at fuel trims and and john one of the things i will tell you this is maybe a little deeper dive into our fr3 or section eliminator but one of the effects of the nanocarbons that we use with the esters in the FR3 and in the stiction eliminator, it increases the film strength of the oil. Mm -hmm. The stronger the film strength, the less blow by you have because that's that's really, you know, the space between the ring and the cylinder wall is the part we're sealing. Now, we're obviously not going to seal it 100%, but let's say you're at 80% now and we take it to 90 or 95%, that's an improvement. And the reason we know that, or how we know that, one of the ways that we're able to measure that is by looking at how much dirt is brought into the oil, um, how much horsepower we get, how much fuel economy. The better that seal is, the better the engine runs. And we've been able to determine that over and over again through testing. So you may try some FR3. That was a long way to get into that. <laughs> <laughs> Mike uh, wrote in said, I noticed on the Stiction Eliminator bottle that it says not to mix with other additives. Can you use FR3 friction reducer and Stiction Eliminator together? Well, you could. You'd be wasting some money uh, because the FR there's already some FR3 in your Stiction Eliminator at the, at the proper dosage. Can you mix our Stiction Eliminator with other additives outside of our product line? We don't recommend it only from the standpoint of we haven't been able to test every single additive on the market to find out what type of synergies happen when two things are mixed. Now, we do know that there are, are some that we've people do run safely, mm -hmm. uh, but we, rather than trying to identify every single additive on the market and telling you what can mix and what can't mix, we recommend that, that, that you don't, or do you mix at your own risk. Well, the other problem with that is on a, on a more um, ground level, if they have a problem with the engine, and then they call up and say, well, the engine's not running quite, quite right now. Well, what did you put in there? Well, I put some STP in there, I put some Lucas, and I put some Stiction Eliminator. Well, that makes it really hard for us to narrow it down. <laughs> so if you if you call up and you say, I used FR3 and this is what it's doing, we have techs on board here that will walk you through that process and we'll try to fix it for you or help you come to a conclusion on what to do next. Um, it's easier if we're only working with one variable. And really, that's just the best way to do it. That's just best practice almost always because you're trying to narrow down the effects of each additive. So David had a good question. I remember I saw this come in. The, uh, he says he has a 2015 Dodge Ram Eco Diesel. Do you have anything to put in the oil to get rid of the soot buildup? I just had my EGR cooler and EGR valve taken off at the dealership and completely clean with some concoction. They said they are going to replace both parts at close to four grand. Wow. And he said no, don't do that. Kevin. Yeah. Well, our, our best recommendation for this, 
our products don't clean the EGR cooler, but our products, you know, mainly the fuel products, help the truck to burn more efficiently, right. so it produces less soot. So, so if, if what we found in testing is that, you know, we we reduce the soot that comes out of the truck about 50 percent. Right. You know, so if your EGR cooler plugged up after 50,000 miles, now it will take 100,000 miles till it till it plugs up. With the diesel extreme going through the combustion chamber, then ending up in the EGR cooler, start to clean out some of the soot. The, how much of that detergent do you think would survive the combustion chamber? Mm, I don't. I don't think it would survive. You don't think so? It all burns up. I think so. Okay. I've always so, wondered that. The answer is unfortunately, you probably already have a EGR, you know, kind of caked up there. Um, can't clean it out, but we can prevent it from getting worse in the future. Um, and maybe those with the, we have to keep an eye on this. We like hearing about this type of stuff because if an eco diesels, you know, it's a, they're getting more popular now. If they're, if they're out there and having this problem, it's something we'd recommend to other owners of that same model. Make sure you're running, you know, one of our, our fuel products to, to get you a better burn so you don't have as much soot coming out because obviously you can create an issue for that model. I, I have had customers tell me that they use the diesel extreme and I'm not recommending this unless you really know what you're doing but they have taken the diesel extreme and used it in a, um, a pressurized bottle one that you pressurize with an with a with an air compressor you know like kind of spray and then they put them into the air system to clean out the soot because in essence what's happening in this case just like with a turbocharger that's the exhaust gas that you're dealing with. You're not dealing with oil, so it doesn't matter how good the oil is or how good the fuel is, neither one of those products is touching the exhaust gas. If you use anything like brake clean or anything that has a propellant in it, it'll cause the engine to race and blow up, so that's always a bad day. Yeah. So don't do that. So what this really smart fellow did, matter of fact, he was in Albuquerque, New Mexico. He took a, a pre-charge can and put the diesel extreme in it because he knew it had a lot of detergent. And then he forced it through the air breather and it went through and cleaned up his turbo vanes and cleaned up the inside of each jar and things like that. So theoretically it could be done. We have not tried it yet, but we are going to probably in the next couple of weeks because it sounds like a fun thing to do. Yeah. Speaking of turbo vanes, Andrew asked, the vanes in my turbo are sticking. Going uphill with a load or just accelerating on the highway, will the sticks and eliminator help with that? Now again, see the oil's not getting to those vanes if I could, then we would. But when you're thinking about something that's got a lot of carbon buildup, the detergents inside the diesel extreme are made to clean that. So that's really, it's just a matter of the application. How do you get it in there? And it, it'd be worth a shot. If I had one, I would try it. I mean, matter of fact, we will try it on one of our trucks here. Yeah. Uh, we have one that's starting to have the same problem with the turbo vanes, um, and they wanted $4,000 to replace it. Yeah. Yeah. So we're gonna try it next week and we'll report back and let you know how it worked. Yeah. Is there any way to do a scope inside there and do a before and after picture? Yeah. Yep. Oh, yeah. Let's Definitely. do that. That'll be good. If we can do a scope inside and say here's the before and here's the after, that would be a great way to um, explain it. Yeah. A couple more comments. Eric Daniels said, i got to get back to work, but very informative today, guys. I appreciate your time doing these. Hey, we're, we're happy to do them, Eric. Thanks for, for logging in and watching us. James Bruce has a sign-off thought number three now. <laughs> okay. We like lube, how about you? <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's keep working on this. We, we need something a little bit better than this. I, th I think we got some good ideas, yeah, but yeah. so far the first one <laughs> was the best one. Jordan Trail says he has a question. We'll ask it, Jordan, we'll, we'll, we'll respond. And James says, tell Big Country I miss his face. We'll pass that along. I think TJ's logged in right now. We'll get Big Country here next week. So before we wrap up, we're kind of buying some time here because Eric has set up a mobile lab real quickly you, you want to go execute your test i'm afraid we're not going to have time because i believe we're going to get booted off here in about three minutes we'll get booted. okay we, we can, can be on for hours if we want we, we can try let me go over here and see the idea of the not sure what's going to show up but i might need to get the camera closer what were you thinking here to do it on a cup or on uh, whichever one shows up at do a couple of them. Here. Here's a couple drops of water. Uh, Can you see it, Levi? Can you see anything? Whose tickets off? 
you. It's like the hell I said, but you probably can't see it on the camera. I'll tell you what, let's put, let's do a video after this and then we'll repost on the next video. Actually, it's coming in pretty good on the plate. Or can you? On the plate? Eric, can you move that camera closer? Just hold it right next to it. Oh, All right, we're going handheld now. That's Levi zooming. Try. You got you got the break on the table. Okay. So what we're gonna do is put some water here like that. And you can see how it's kind of holding its shape. As soon as you put the soap in it, it starts to spread out. We'll do it. We'll, we'll set it up as the next video. Aaron's got a job to do now. Yeah. Cut us a video. We can do that. Uh oh, you got Chris wandering now. <laughs> well, I know. This is what we do at LSAC. <laughs> Here he goes. Can you get that cardboard? Oh, yeah, there you go. So you can see the water droplet as soon as you hit it with some soap. <laughs> Once the soap it spreads, it wants to spread out and go everywhere. We will put together a better video for you. Yeah, <laughs> should have been ready for that one. Hey, but nothing wrong with an impromptu science experiment. I think if you had something that's done. Oh, that's coming in good actually. I can see it. Try the paper. Does it work? Yeah, but the white background, I think, is so hard to pick up. I see it's too white. But okay. We're good, Levi. Why don't you close out? Why don't you give us a sign? Well, so for the end of the day here, reminder that our new products are available for sale online. That's the gasoline extreme, the diesel winter rescue, our transmission fluids, our gear oils, our new gun and bow lube, all on there. Uh, don't forget to subscribe to our e-mail newsletter, like and follow our Facebook page. We, we do a giveaway? Oh, we haven't. I was going to suggest that. How about some gun oil? We don't really give away some cool one. That's just... How about, how about we give away a couple t-shirts? Because we got new t-shirts coming. So I guess we need to clean out our old inventory. So I am going to pick a couple names. David Colorado, you get a shirt. Eric Daniels has some good questions. Uh, you get a shirt. And Logan Cavender, great question earlier. You get a shirt as well. So why don't you guys uh, shoot us your address on our private message, and we'll get you out a Hot Shot Secret apparel. Your size. Yeah, and your size, of course. And we have one more sign-off idea. Superior lubrication for your hard-working engines. Now that's pretty, pretty serious. I like it. All right, so we are going to sign off with Kevin's own sign off. Shoot. <laughs> Have a good weekend, everybody. We'll see you next